Hello, Packer fans. Welcome to Packer Talk with Green with my special guest, Roger Wolf. We're going to talk about an exciting win over the Minnesota Vikings Sunday at Lambeau Field, a divisional win for us. And the show is brought to you by Coca-Cola, distri distributing Oshkosh, Ratchet Dance Pizza, and Audio Plus for the videotape. Roger, look at the top board up here. And to make a uh, long story short, the Minnesota Vikings came to play, and they really put a hurt on us, offensively, defensively, and so on. But look at the top board. Uh, 33 minutes on the clock they had, we had 26 minutes. First down about even, we had a few more, we had two more on them. Total yards, they took us by 40 yards. Then we'll look at Favre's record day. He surpassed the great Bart Stars for touchdowns with Green Bay Packer history. We'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, it was a game of two halves. We, you know, we scored 31 points in the, in the first half. We thought, oh, we, it's a cakewalk, no problem. You know, it's going to be an easy win. But Minnesota, with, with, a couple, with a couple of bad breaks on our part, some stuff, Minnesota gotten back in the game on that. Drop balls is part of the game we had again yesterday. Uh, special teams is not as, as maybe enthusiastic as last year's team. Uh, maybe hopefully they'll get this, uh, Nolan Cromwell will get the special teams working, Roger. Uh, and we'll take the W. We will take the W. We are three and one. On the other side of the ball, Minnesota came to play. Uh, Randall is a good ball player, all pro, all, all pro player, but he's somewhat of a nasty side. He does have a nastiness to him, Roger. And it was a very good game, and uh, we came out on the, uh, the victory. We're three and one, and they're two and two. And hopefully we'll see you in Minnesota. And I uh, will take it from there, Roger. So uh, what do you want to talk about first? Well, I think the main thing is we're going to have to talk about is that every time we play somebody, no matter who it is, on every play, that team is going to give 125%. So right. basically, in essence, the teams that we play, it's their Super Bowl. So it's not going to be an easy season. You know, it's not, We're not going to cakewalk through games like we yeah. did last year. I, Minnesota is a good football team. You know, they may be only two and two, but they still are a good football team. Well, they threw up a lot of yards on us. They did, 390 yards, a lot of them on the ground too. Oh. You know, after the Packers tied the game at seven and seven, one of the biggest plays in that game was Minnesota drove down the field, and Robert Smith ran a 50-yard run, and Leroy Butler, who happened to be blitzing on that play, happened to catch him from behind to get him just enough to shove him out of bounds and they ended up getting nothing because they ended up missing a chip shot field goal. So that was a big play in that football That was very game. important for us, yes. As far as our offense, in the second quarter of yesterday's game was probably the best the Packers have looked all year so far. Right, Everything right. was in sync in that second they quarter. Did, they did score a lot of points in the second quarter. They yesterday. could have had even more, too, had Robert Brooks not jumped the gun on that one. It would have been a six <sighs> for Brett okay, on that day. Okay, okay. So, other than that, Green, what do you have to say? Uh, it was a very physical, hard-fought win for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, Minnesota, when you look at the, the way they played, the heart they played with yesterday, and tenacity and Brad Johnson, the quarterback in the running game, Minnesota maybe should have, could have won that ball game, but uh, we were home at, uh, we were home at Lambeau, and it's pretty tough to beat us up here. I don't know if we had the luck of the Irish or whatever it is, but uh, we're hard to beat up here, and we did come out with a win. And, Thank goodness we did come out with a win because uh, it's, it's a double win because it's a divisional thing. And uh, so that's one of the first. We have three divisional games in a row coming up. We'll talk about that. But uh, Brett Favre's record, uh, he broke Bart Starr's touchdown record, 106, 152. Now Mr. Brett Favre had five years. He maybe could have had six, so on and so forth. But he, uh, he broke a great Bart Starr's record, and he will be going – Ended at hundreds, 200s, and maybe 300, depends on how healthy he stays, Roger. He's a great quarterback, and uh, and he, he was player of the game maybe yesterday. I huh? think Brett was the player of the game. The player of the game was the Butler tackle, and Brett Favre was the player of the game. You know, some of them, some of the passes that they dropped, Roger, are just pretty, just perfect passes. Well, that does happen in football. Unfortunately, you hate to see receivers who have the ball in their hands drop it, you know, because that's what they're getting paid for. They're getting paid to catch the ball, right. but. It does happen to the best of them. Jerry Rice even drops balls, you know, yeah. so, and he's one of the better receivers of all time. Uh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, getting back to the Packers, um, like I said, the Packers' second quarter was their best quarter of in, eight, in all the quarters they played so far this year, including the Bear game, right. which they won quite handily. Right. But they're still even they struggled in that game. Right, they did. Fortunately, we are three and one, like you said, you know, and you can't take that away from us. You know, Tampa Bay is an up-and-coming team. You know, we got them coming down the road in a couple of weeks. But first, we got to look for Detroit. You know, we go to Detroit Sunday. I think, I think not with the, with the injuries, we got a little dinged-up injury, and with everybody coming up after us, like you said, 125 percent, 125 percent. I think the Green Bay Packers, as a team, as a coaching staff, have to play smart, intelligent football. 
And a lot of the so-called trash talking that these other teams do. I mean, everybody does it, some more, some less. But we have to maintain our composure, poise. I think, right, I, think I used the word right. poise last week. I mean, in the, in the, in a, we, some of the poise has to come to the forefront of our team with leadership and talent. Poise has to, and character has to come up now. They the have to, uh, they have to eliminate mistakes. You know, even when they got ahead 31 to seven, they let the Vikings back in the game. Right. Because the second half kickoff when Bill Schroeder fumbled. That was kind of a momentum change at the time. You know, it did let Minnesota get back in the game. Lord. And Minnesota, you know, they, they can do it. They showed they can do it. You know, right. they, they could have won that game at the end had Reggie not made the play that saved it at the end. But right. Anyway. Um, I was just going to bring up about, about our special teams. Now, what do you think? Where's, where's the missing link in our special teams over a 96 te team? Well, what do you think is missing for us? I mean, we're not, nobody's scoring on us, but we're not moving, we're not getting our offense in, in so-called pretty good field position on the kickoff and I, punt returns. I think one thing that maybe not so much in special teams but the turnovers you know are not giving us good field position like right. we were getting last year. Right. You know we were having to drive 40, 30, maybe 50 yards whereas this year we've had a lot of times to go 70, 80, 90 yards you know, and that makes a difference in pro football. Oh you know? yes it does. You got to go that extra 40 yards there's there's six or seven plays more that a defense can make a play and stop you. Do you think Mr. Billy Schrader is, uh, what, what seems to be you know is he I think uh, isn't he? Billy Schrader is a north and south runner. I don't know if he's trying to look east and west for holes or, or what the problem is. But no, yesterday it doesn't seem like he got tackled too hard. He ran into one of his own players, so to speak, and the ball came loose. He probably yeah. has to put the ball away better. You know, it seems to me that he's kind of carrying it loose. You know, and that's part of his problem. The coach benched him. He did for that looseness. He put Chris Starkins in to run back right. kicks after that. You know. But that was a big play because that you know we had a 31 to 7 lead at the time. We could have probably maybe made it much easier for ourselves. But when that, those two turnovers to start the third quarter, the tip ball, which really isn't Brett's fault, but no. you know it does turn out as a turnover, and Minnesota scores 15 quick points, right. and they're right back in the ball game. Uh, okay, this okay. The second half, we had a second half kickoff yesterday. Okay, we had a big 24 point lead. Okay, it was very comfortable. That's not a wrong, there's nothing wrong with a 24 point lead. No, but the, what, you uh -huh. should win most ball games with a 24 point lead going into the second half. Well, I thought, okay, use some six, seven minutes on the clock, get a field goal, get a touchdown. You know, clock management, clock usage is very important for the NFL team. And uh, we, didn't, we didn't use it. We had a turnover on special teams right away and a, a tip ball interception. With, with Brady, an ex-Packer, maybe he still has a little uh, meanness in him for the Green Bay Packers because we cut him a few years ago and he tipped it and, and stuff. He, he so. says that all along. It's yeah. one motivational thing for him to play better against Green Bay because we did let him go. Right. I think one thing, and that's, that's a big thing really, the Packers did not have Gilbert Brown for much of the game. No. And that helped Minnesota's running game because a lot right. of Minnesota's running game is between the tackles. You get Robert Smith going, and he you can cut back real fast. And if you don't have a Gilbert Brown in there to plug up the middle, that's how they got a lot of their yards oh, yeah, running. About, I think 180 yards or something they had the, running. The yesterday. quarterback draw play, definitely, and you know, I worked two or three times for Minnesota, and that was because on that one play that in the first quarter early in the game when Brad Johnson ran like for 33 yards, Wayne Simmons was playing the middle linebacker, and he kind of slid off to the side, and that whole middle just was like the parting of the Red Sea, you know, and Brad Johnson saw that, and he just tapped the center, and away they went. Yeah. And 33 yards later, you know, they finally tackled him, but that, that was a big play in Minnesota's first touchdown drive that gave them the 7 to nothing lead. Right. No. So Gilbert definitely was missed. I, that's not taking anything away from Darius Holland. Oh, no. He's just not a Gilbert Brown at stuffing the run. Stuffing you know? the run. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the Green Bigger is probably one of the best in the National Football League, if not the if best. If not the best, yeah. He's, stuffing. he's uh, right up in the, he's definitely in the top five of right. all time as far as run stuffing. Uh, do you think Coach Holmgren might be a little conservative sometimes? We think he was, might have been a little conservative in the second half. The so-called uh, juggler see. and all that kind of stuff, go for the throat and all that kind of stuff. I and, suppose and it put it to him, you know, that's and, part of it, yeah. Stuff. But the two turnovers, you know, where that was a big momentum swing because that gave, enabled Minnesota, like I said a little earlier, to get those 15 quick points. And Dennis you know? Green will take advantage of it. Oh, Dennis Green and the Vikings are a good football team, you know, and they're going to take advantage of every break they get. Right. You know, and fortunately for us, we had just enough in the second half to hold on. That last, the fifth touchdown for Favre to Chimura in the third quarter was Chewy. very big. And speaking of Chewy's touchdown, that's the first touchdown pass in a year and a half or a and year and in in whatever. The, I mean, over no, a year. Yeah, over a year. And uh, it's been about a long time since he, he, he it scored. Was, it was in before the Super Bowl season right. that he had last scored a touchdown. Right, and so it, I, and it made him feel good.
he had to have a, you know, that was a momentum thing for him to get a touchdown. He's very important for uh, Brett Favre in the, the blocking scheme and the tight end schemes. That the we, running game, too. The running game and stuff. Blocker, you know. Yeah. Uh, no. We got somewhat of a mis mixed bag of offensive linemen, Jeff Dallenbach and and uh, Wilkerson, and you know. So, but now Big Earl's back, and uh, but Frankie Winters. I don't know when he'll be back. Maybe next week. He or a may weeks. be back for Detroit. Maybe, may, hopefully for Tampa at the very latest. So, I mean, and and John Michaels, uh, he could have played. Yes, he could, he got a little dinged, but he could have played. But coach said. Give Ross Verba a shot, and Ross Verba is. Well, Verba did uh, a good brings job. A different, he brings a different kind of an animal to the table, don't he? Like Brett Favre said, their their line is kind of a nonchalant line, and Ross Verba is a whole different personality. You know, he's a rip snort and spitting type of lineman, and that's exactly what the Packers need. You know, somebody to mix it up you a little bit. Mix it up a little bit. Get him with, going. With the Randall, with, with Mr. Mr. John Randall. With Mr. John Randall, yes. Who is one good football player? He's a little dirty at times, but he still is a good football he player. Sure he sure he likes to talk. He likes to talk. He came all fired up. I don't think he stopped talking that whole game when he was on the field. When I seen him leave the stadium, he was kind of down in the dumps. But I suppose at that point, you know, they would be. But you know, I, they had lost the game. Uh, have you been to a game yet this year? I did make it to the Bears game, the first game of the season. First game. Of the season. Well, there's nothing wrong with making to the Bears game. That was my. Course. That was my first time I had been to a Packer game since Brett Favre's first start when they beat the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. The Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. The Cincinnati game was well, the week before yeah, that. Yeah, they came well, back. Well, he didn't start that. No, no he started that game, started and he got it, injured, yeah. and then Favre started the next week the next against, week against Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Yeah, and then this was the first time since that game that I've been to Lambeau Field. It was quite. What do you, a think, about the, what do you think about the change in there with the skyboxes and stuff, and uh, all the banners and I all that kind of neat? I think it's quite nice. You know, yeah. it, it it brings it more of a like a I don't know a party atmosphere ain't quite the word I'm looking for, but we'll use that for right now. But Enthousi more enthusiasm, more enthusiasm, more people. I think they probably. Realistically, looking back on things, they probably should have put maybe five or ten thousand more seats in there, and then put the sky boxes in. Yeah. You know, because they they could they could sell sixty, seventy, eighty thousand tickets for every game. How about that? How about that new uh, field we have? You guys playing on? I still have mixed reviews on that. It well, seems players are having a mixed review on it. it too there's yet. a lot of slipping and sliding on it. Yeah, they're still it. trying to figure that out down there. It's it's half artificial turf and half real grass, and it's the water problem is what's causing the slipping in that. So the jury's still out on that. Uh, I think personally myself, I think they should have left the old turf in, but that's progress. You well, know? people that got the sod, bring it back. Well, Roger <laughs> will buy everyone you no, every, no. every piece of the thunder. Roger will buy it back. I can't. I don't have that kind no. of money. <laughs> But anyway, uh, so I'm glad you're, uh, you, you're a guest on your show once in a while, and basically you've been to the Bear, Bear Game shows, and I've been now you, uh, you hang around the, in the Central Division shows anyway. you got the Vikings, and uh, right. okay, they're out of the way. We beat the Vikings for the first time. We got a, a, another time in December we played them, but now next week we have the Detroit Lions away at the Silverdome up. Another somewhat hazardous place for the Green Bay Packers to play, although, the, although last year we did pretty good, put a pretty good hurt on them over there. Uh, but this time around, Roger, I think it's going to be a whole new ball game. It definitely will be a whole new game. Last year when we played them at the Silverdome, we were on a roll at that time. You know, after, after the Rams game, everything just rolled right on through the Super Bowl and everything. And this year is a different year. You know, we've got a few people that are banged up, a few people that are not playing. Yes. Detroit has very physical, big receivers. Right. They have Again. a good football team. You know, not, we're not, we can't take anything away from anybody, you know. Anybody can come in and beat us. You know, we got to play solid football for 60 minutes. We can't expect right. to play That's 50 right. minutes and win the game. We've got to play 60 minutes, avoid turnovers, and have the offense put up as many points as we can because this year right now, we have to have the points. Apparently. Our defense right now is playing sort of mixed bags. You know, they're, they're giving up Me more yards and more points. I, read, I listened to Reggie White the other day and uh, watching his show. He said uh, communication is not all there. Well, that's because, for example, well, Tyrone Williams taking Doug or Craig Newsom's spot, you know, and then Doug Evans getting nicked up yesterday. I don't know what his status is. Uh, just a sure. little, little tie, little bruise. Hopefully, tie. it's nothing major. You know, hopefully right. he'll be able to play Sunday against Detroit. Right. But everybody has to play, and of course we miss Gilbert Brown. You know, so that that does to do things to a defense. You know, you force new people to play, throws your timing off. It throws your sink off, you know, and then other teams take advantage of that. You know, they see this, they see that in the film, so they're gonna they're gonna run their offense designed to go at those people, you know. Speaking of running offense, uh, Detroit has a pretty good running back, don't they? Oh, Barry Sanders. They, although Detroit got beat yesterday pretty handily by Mike Ditka down in New Orleans, former uh, Bear coach, former Bear coach bounce. 
But anyway, so they got a fullback now for him. They got a big, strong left-handed quarterback, Scott Mitchell. They had big, tall receivers. And so they got a pretty aggressive. They'll bring it on kind of a defense. So, like you said, right, we have to play we hard to play. and 60 minutes. If we would have played 59 minutes last Sunday, we would have lost. That's right. If we'd have played 59 minutes in any game, we might not have. We might not be three and one right now. That's right. But what we uh, got to do against Detroit is try to keep their offense off the field as much as possible. You know. Yes. Try to have our our offense have ball control drives where they chew up six, seven minutes. You know, 15 plays, stuff like that, and then get right. the touchdown. Right. Uh, Barry Sanders. Uh, Barry Sanders is probably really one of the best running backs in the game today. If not the best today. One of the best, yeah, because you got Emmett Smith. You know, those Emmett guys Smith. are all good running backs. Uh, Barry is a very good football player. He can cut back very quick. Well, he's know? probably the best cutback runner, isn't it? He is. He is. That's why you got to watch all of the back door, front door, side doors, everything can't, else. You can't let up, you know. If you got, if you see six guys by him, that seventh guy who's three yards off has to be ready to make a tackle That's just right. in case Barry, you know, makes a move and avoids everybody. And they have a new coaching staff, that Bobby Ross. Bobby Ross has taken over for Wayne Fonts. I think in the long run that's going to help Detroit. I think they're still learning Bobby Ross's offense and defense, you know, right now. So that's a little bit of an advantage in our favor. We're catching them when they're not quite ready to play. You know, they're not in sync with their new the coaching scheme. staff and everything. The new scheme of things and offense. So hopefully we'll be able to go in and get a W out of Detroit next Sunday and come back and be 4-1, and one, taking care of business up to that point. Well, yeah, like you said, we have four three more divisional games in a row, Roger. We, have well, well, we're, we can't worry about... Three or four games down the road. We have to we worry about Packer fans. We have to worry about the Detroit Lions Sunday at the Silverdome. Yes, that's we play by was. play, and and hopefully the best talented team will come out on the top of it, which I think is the Green Bay Packers with Brett Favre. Uh, we need some. Uh, they got to hold on the ball, Roger. And the turnovers. We have to. The mis mental mistakes drives Coach Holmgren nuts. When we make mistakes and commit penalties, he, like you said, that does drive any coach nuts, you know, and especially Mike Holmgren. He's pretty much perfectionist. a perfectionist in many ways. You know, right. he demands his players give 110 to 125 percent on every play, and right. which they have to do, you know, because everybody, every opponent we play is going to be psyched up to beat us because that's, in essence, that's their Super Bowl, you know. Yes. So they got, they, they're going to come in and they're going to give you 125 percent every play. No, um, our running game, though, of course, we got Dor we're, we're, we miss Edgar Bennett, and we'll be back next year, but Dorsey Lemons is, uh, is taking the blunt to the running back. But how about mixing up with, uh, where's Travis Jeremy Ben and Darkens and some of this? Well, where, where's some of this, uh, I mean, right so-called depth and uh, other running backs that we have back right there? Right now, they? Dorsey is doing a good job. Right. He does have over 300 yards rushing so right. far, so he is doing a good job. So that's, and William Henderson is doing a oh. good job, too, when he gets his chances, you know, so I think... As long as those guys are doing well, that's going to limit the time of a Travis Jervy to get in their ball game. You know, if, if Dorsey starts having bad games, or if Henderson starts having bad games, then you could see Travis Jervy come in and play. But right now, the running game is not the greatest running game, but it is moving the ball, so they're going to just stick with what they, what's going for them. Right oh yeah, now. Coach Holmgren is not a he's not a razzle dazzle trickery kind of a guy. He's basically up front on both sides of the ball. That's right. And, and uh, the talent, though, talent. Of course, our passing the... game, you know, is one of the best in football, you know, with right. Brett Favre. Well, just hold on, hold on the ball, Mr. Antonio Freeman, please. Well, receivers do drop balls. You know, he should have caught that ball. There's no doubt. You know, they would have been on the 10-yard line, and they might have put the game away at that point. But anyway, you know, speaking of Brett Favre, he did beat Bart Starr's record, and it took him five-plus years to do that. Yeah. And as he said after the game, he said, and they're taking nothing away from Bart Starr. Bart Starr was a great football player in his era, but the, they do throw the ball twice as much in a game as they did in those days. So that's oh. why Brett Favre has got to that point so oh. fast, you know. Right. And um, of, on the 156 touchdowns which Favre now has, he's throwing 41 of them to a former Packer, who now is in ESPN, and you all know who that is, Sterling Sharp, of course. Robert Brooks is second with 24 touchdowns, and Antonio Freeman now has 13 catches from Brett Favre for touchdowns in his career. And Mr. Jackson's in there somewhere, too? Keith Jackson's 10 or 11, and Edgar Bennett has 10. Right. And Edgar Bennett is a guy that we miss, too, a little bit. There's no doubt about that, you know. But right now we're playing good enough to win games, and that's all you have to do. You know, you have to win games. I mean, you look at the NFL and you look at how many games in an average year are pretty games. 
maybe five to ten games. You know, winning ugly is a thing that you Happens. have to, you have to do. You know, right. and so far we've been good at it. That's somewhat like baseball. A little bit of baseball one run games. Mm -hmm. The champions in the Major League Baseball win win the close game. Win the one run games. And the Packers proved it yesterday by winning another close game. You know they. Right. You know, the great Vince Lombardi, the great Vince Lombardi, he didn't beat, when he was going for second and third repeats and stuff, he didn't beat everybody 45 to 3. He didn't beat everybody 27 to nothing. He beat people 27 to 26 and 33 to 29. And so he had close and ugly games and he had penalties in there and all kinds of, all kinds of stupid stuff. It didn't work perfect for him. The thing to do with your mistakes is to limit them to a minimum, you know, and then you're going to be all right. If right. you can cut down on your mistakes and not turn the ball over five times and commit ten penalties in a game, if you can go a game with just maybe one turnover and a couple of penalties, you're going to be all right. Okay, that brings up one point. Last year on our stretch drive when the Packers really were rolling over these teams, we very seldom had any mental breakdowns or, or penalties that, that held a drive back. So that's very important. Mental mistakes and penalties and, and, and things like this add up and they right. do hurt you eventually. You're not going to beat an NFL football team very often if you have 10 or 12, 15 penalties and you drop a lot of balls and you have turnovers. So you have to play a good ball game in the NFL to win. Last year, when the last eight games of last year, I don't know the exact number, but our turnovers and everything were way down. You know, we made very few mistakes, and that helped us. You know, that was what drove us to the Super Bowl and drove us to New Orleans to a victory. Right. I think I think maybe uh, maybe they're lacking some poise and some thought, maybe a little bit. I think it's more. You know, other teams aren't. We don't sneak up on anybody anymore. You no, know, everybody knows who the defending Super Bowl champions are. And yeah, Green Bay! They're the Super Bowl champs in 1997. And they're going to come out every game, you know, and with the attitude that they can play they're better than good Green Bay, and they're just as good, and they can beat us, you know. And right. They're going to give it their all. You know, they're not going to leave anything on the field. They're going to leave it all. They're going to put it all down, and they're going to give everything on every play. And at the end of the game, they're going to hopefully come out with a W as far as they're concerned, and they're not going to leave anything, you know, left to go. They're all going to be out of gas. It's character, and, a lot of character, mm -hmm. character. We have to play perfect every game just about to win. Isn't that amazing? You know, you talk, look at last year, you know, we didn't, we didn't have to, you know, we were beating these teams pretty good. We didn't have to play perfect, but I think the struggle that we have upon us in the 97 season, Roger, the Green Bay Packers have to play 60 solid minutes of football. That's and try to stay mistake-free as possible, and uh, keep the me mental mistakes down as many as few That's as possible. That's the thing too. about not being able to sneak up on anybody, you know. Right. You got. You're gonna. You have to go into a game with the attitude that the opponent that's playing you on that given day is going to do their best that they can. So we have to play our best, overcome all of that. Right. And th when we make mistakes, we just keep the team that we're playing in the game. You know, and those, like I said, those two turnovers you take at the start of the third quarter, that's a 15-point swing. You know, and you can't do that and expect to win the game. Not the NFL, no. You know, there's going to be a time, we'll take the Philadelphia game, you know, where we lost. We just didn't play well. We dropped a lot of passes, and it, it showed, you know, that was our only loss of the year so far. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be the last one. Hopefully he'll be the only one. But, but we have to work very hard to, to finish off the they season. Can't, they can't just go out. Stay healthy too, Green Bay. They will definitely. The injury factor, you know, that's another thing that's letting teams have a chance. You know, we're a little nicked up. We're missing some of our key personnel. You know, you take a Frank Winters out, and you take an Earl Dotson, you take a Gilbert Brown, a Craig Newsom. Naturally, that's going to knock the level of our play down just a little bit. But so far, for the most part, we've been able to overcome most of that. You know, guys that have come Death in. is very important. The guys that have come in have done the job. You know, Tyrone Williams is still learning. He's still a young kid. He's only in his second year. He yes. can only get better. You know, right. people like that can only get better. And Jeff Dallenbach has come in, and you haven't really missed Frank Winters that much, you know. No, he's been around. He's been around forever. He's he's a veteran, you know. He's a 13-year veteran. He knows what it's all about. Yeah, what it takes. Yes. He knows what what he has to do to come in there and play that game. So I guess we got a few minutes. So uh, Roger, uh, what do you think the score? Is? What, what are the pack? Okay, we all know what the Packers have to do. We all know what the NFL teams have to do to win. They have to hold on the ball, convert third down, and first down is a very important down. Hold on the ball, and all the things that we have to do, we have to do this weekend against the Detroit Lions. Well, you were speaking about first downs. What you got to avoid, one thing, is second and long. You know, like second you got to avoid, avoid second and 10, second and 12, second and 8. You'd like to come out I idealistically with second and 3, second and 4, you know, so you can do almost anything to get the first down after that. Right. 
but the mistakes, you know, and like I said, Detroit's going to come out, and they're going to play the best possible football game that they can. Hopefully we have enough in our tank to overcome all of that right. and to um, come out of Detroit 4-1. and one. Yes, we have some work cut out for us as well. Oh, we definitely. Did. Detroit is a lot like Minnesota with the receivers, you know, Herman mm -hmm. Moore Big and ones. Robert Perriman. And Barry. And Barry, of course. Barry Sanders is another dimension all oh, by himself. Oh, that's another all by himself. And Scott Mitchell is not really a bad quarterback. No, he's not bad. At, no. He has inconsistent games, but if he has a hot game, he can do it, you know. He yeah. can throw well, five touchdown yes, passes in a game if he's in his game too, you know. So. Okay. So what do you think the score is going to be this week? Well, I'm going to go with another very close game. Well, before you get the Green Bay Packers are 0-4 with the spread, so I don't think they're, they're not making ba making very many people happy with that spread thing. But we're on four with the spread. So I don't know what the spread will be this week, probably five or six. I don't think it'll be more that, than that. that you? Bring, that brings up a good point, Green, right there. The Packers, even though they won the Super Bowl last year, there's no team in football that should go into a game as a 12 or 13 point favorite. Right. Or the Bears with 14 or six, no, 16 or whatever any, it was. Yeah. You know, I would say a, a good point would be for Green Bay to be like a five to seven point favorite, you know. Right. Realistically speaking, you know, because like I said, they're gonna, the other team is going to throw everything they can at us. Okay. So I would say Green Bay, well, but for my pick for the game will be Green Bay 28, Detroit 25. Oh, it's close. Another, I know. I, another I, close I, I, game. Oh, another close game. I think it was going to be a little bit more. I think it's going to be like 27 to 18 Green Bay. I think we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna beat them by nine and uh, and stuff. So say hi to some. We got out about a minute or so. Say hi to some people out there. Right oh, I'd like to say hi to my girlfriend, Karen, who's working. I love you, honey. Oh, I'm working. Hi, Karen. To be, I'm sorry you're not working. I mean, you're working instead of being down here next to Roger in the Green Show. But anyway, say so... Say hi to all my friends like Tom and Bob and my friend and Nina, who I'm going to work for, Dell. I'd like to say hi, Dell. How you doing? Hi, Dell. I'd like to say hi to everybody that's watching the show. Hope you enjoy it. And uh, I'll just like to remind you, it's on at uh, 10 o'clock uh, Friday nights and Sunday mornings at 1030. Uh, I just hope you enjoy the show. and uh, Go Pack Go! Go Pack Go! And we have a tough uh, road to home. And we take the Lions one game at a time, the Lions in, in the Silverdome Sunday. And we're going to come out of there with a 4-1 record. And stay healthy, Green Bay. Hold on to the ball. No turnovers, no mental mistakes. Fritz, get your defense up for this game. Uh, Seth Joyner, I don't know what he's going to We got some people that are on quite. We don't know if Seth Joyner is going to play or whatever, and some other people. But uh, anybody that's playing for the Green Bay Packers, just have a heart, play with character and poise and leadership. You'll take it to them in Detroit Sunday and come out with a win. The people at play have to do the job, whoever it might be. And that's, that's right. the bottom line. We have to do the job, or else we're not going to win the game. I just like to say hi. Well, I should say hi to my wife, Julie, and my in laws and stuff, and anybody, all my friends out there, and uh, the Neagle crew, and. Uh, all we got to do Sunday is beat Detroit. Yes, take care of Detroit Sunday. Taking care of business. We have a wrap. Okay. Thank you very much. Go Pack Go. Green, it's been good. Thank Enjoyed you very much. It.